Luke, congratulations. You had to dig very deep there against Martin Luke when up on the main stage. Yeah, Martin's a, a fantastic player. Um, a really, really tough. I, I played him quite a few times. He is a really, really tough player to beat. Um, yeah, I, I struggled to find the range quite early on. I think the first four to five legs, you know, it, they just weren't coming at me and right. The stage is quite bright, so it was like it was, it was, I was trying to focus in on the dartboard and. Um, we used to have quite dark backgrounds recently, but with the Kazoo um, sponsor, it was quite bright, and I was trying to, um, not excuses, I was just trying to find my range. It was all quite, you know, my eyes were uh, trying to, to figure out what was going on, but um, yeah, I, I sort of found it in the end. It, it, was a, it was a mixed emotions game. It, it felt like the first half, it really wasn't my best, and then in the, the final part of the game, it, it felt more what I've been playing recently. At 4 2 down, did you always have the belief that you could get back into it, even though he was playing that well? Yeah, I, 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 that's the, that obviously a lot of people know that's the thing that's changed in me. I think the belief is what's um, changed in my game when I'm from pretty much at the you know looking at defeat in the, in the face. I always seem to find a way, and uh, there's so many great players over the last few years that uh, seem to have that knack. Um, and I'm I'm sort of finding it a bit more now. You know that knack to when you're sort of looking at defeat to, to find a way to finally turn it round and win. So I never panicked. I never um, you know. Through the towel, I just knew uh, if I played my best, I could I could bring it back, and uh, luckily I did. Short turnaround between the Grand Slam and here is it is it sunk in yet? You're a two-time major champion there. I, I don't think it'll ever sink in. I think I don't, I don't know when it when it should, when it will. You know that sort of feeling. Um, I think my achievements over the, the last two years have been fantastic. That than the last six weeks. Uh, you know I've had a, I've had a great couple of years. You know I've been working to this to these moments for a long, long time. You know, I started off um, against Martin actually in, in that first Euro Tour win and that's what catapulted me to these moments of, of winning major titles. So, you know, it's been a long road, but um, yeah, I think it, it's slowly but surely sinking in, but my will to win is still higher than ever. It's a lot on the line this weekend. Obviously, it could be your third major title and also that world number three spot. You could go into Alexandra Palace as the world number three. Huge motivation for you this weekend. Yeah. I Every every major tournament I play in, there's huge motivation for me. Obviously, now I'm the two-time major champion. I want to be three-time. I want to be four-time. You know, I want to keep, um, you know, the, keep going while the, the form's hot and it's, it's going well. Um, you know, you just want to keep um, riding the crest of the wave because, you know, as much as I don't think it'll ever end, I just think that sometimes it will. It's not always. What I mean is, it's not always going to be like this. It's not always going to be roses and you win major titles every weekend. It, it, there is going to be moments where you maybe don't win one for a year. Maybe you don't win for 18 months, you know, it, it, these sort of things can happen. So, you know, I'm in that hot, hot bit of form at the moment, so I'm trying to cash in as much as possible and win as much as I can. Luke, many congratulations. Thank you, Paul. Luke, when you was 4-2 down in that match, you still look confident, there was no head shake, and I know that's something you've been working on. Is that a conscious thing in your mind that when things aren't going your way, just make sure that you can present that outward image of confidence still? Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't like the head shaking from myself, but I think it become a habit. It's something that I've done my whole life when I was a kid to now, you know, 15 years since I first picked up a dart properly. I've just done it the whole, all the time. You know, sometimes you hit a 140 and you shake it because you think it should be a 180, but it, it wasn't something that I, when I hit a 140 and it should be a 180, it's not that I'm disgusted, it's just a habit. I just shook my head out of habit and uh, now I think I don't want to give off that negativity to the opponent because like I've had many, many advice from top, top players, like Peter Wright, he says, you know, Michael, um, they will say, look, don't do it because it shows negativity. So they've given me that bit of advice to help me out a little bit. So for me, I think that you know, if I keep showing that negativity, I'm, I'm only giving the opponent an extra 5%. So I am trying my best to, to, to stop doing it. Um, and I think you know, over the last six to, to eight weeks, I think I have improved a little bit more on it, to be fair. After the Grand Slam, you, you became favourite for the World Championship and also favourite for, for this tournament. Does it change your mindset when you are labelled as the favourite you can no longer fly under the radar? You know, you are the man to beat. Um, yes and no. I mean, obviously, you know, I don't think I could sort of slip under the radar of the last two years I've had, even if I didn't win a major. I think, you know, everyone, would, so everyone was saying, and I'm not saying myself, I think everyone was saying, he's it, due one, it's going to come, it's going to happen. So I don't think I'd have flown under the radar, but, you know, now um, being the favourite, it, it's a great, obviously, it's a great feeling and it feels great um, for me personally, but, you know, I don't look at it that way I don't walk into this tournament thing I'm the best player I'm going to win I'm the favourite you know, there's about six players that, that I think are up there I'm not going to name names but I think there's six players that could, could easily win this and then there's about another 20 that could possibly win this so you know walking into into the room 
I don't look at myself as this big, big favourite that everyone sort of puts out. You know, these are. I mean, I'm in a good, rich vein of form, but of course, it can uh, doesn't mean I'm not 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 be no one can beat me. You know, there's plenty of performances out there that could definitely beat me. When you do win the majors like you have done in quick succession, there's a lot more pressure and media commitments that come with that. Do the extra things around that affect your preparation leading up to tournaments? Not, not particularly. No, I think you know if you if you if you have a lot of media attention and a lot of media uh, commitments, then it's a good thing because it means you're doing well. Um, so you know when when the media commitments dry up, then obviously you're not doing so well. So yeah, it does not uh, it doesn't bother me to be honest. I think this is all part and parcel of the job of what we do. Um, you know, if you win a world title, you become world number one. It's going to get even more busy. It's going to come more harder. But you know, this is something I'm prepared if it happens to me one day because. That's what you dream of, you know, being world champion, world number one is what I've always dreamed of being. Um, never thought it was a reality until the last few weeks. I think it's become much more of a reality for myself in my mind. doesn't mean I will do it, it just means it's become more of a reality and I believe I can do it. But um, yeah, I enjoy the media commitments because, you know, you guys work hard uh, just like I do. So yeah, I don't, I don't really mind it to be fair. Just think, thank you, well done. Thank you.